guys, welcome back. This is episode four of Woodland and Whimsical Cake Art. So today we're actually going to be making the Brim's Kutch. So the first job we're going to be making is some twigs. So let's get cracking. Okay, so to make these twigs, we don't actually need a lot of tools. I've got my tweezers. Now I tend to use angled ones, but you don't have to. Um, I'm also going to use my ball tool and the good old Dresden. And I've also got a sharp knife as well. Now I'll be using a uh, flour paste. You can use any brand you prefer. This is by Squire's Kitchen. Um, I'm going to be using kebab skewers because obviously they're allowed in food. And I've got my corn flour at the ready in case my hands get a bit hot. And I've also got a little weighing scales. Now each of these twigs that I've already made are between 11 centimeters and 13, sorry, 11 grams and 13 grams in weight. So it's just to give you a rough idea, but they are 13 centimetres long for each one. Now, the only reason I'm keeping them the same is just so that I can have a little bit of, of balance when I'm actually putting the shelter together. Excuse the rustling. So let's grab a little bit of paste. I'm just going to make sure it's the right size. There we are. That's 11.9 grams. So just to give you an idea, I'm just going to move these off to the side. One important thing to mention, when you're using flour paste, always keep it sealed up. I do like the sealed packets that these come in because they're really strong. I also pop them in an extra bag as well. Um, and flour paste, if it's got raw egg white in, it needs to be stored uh, in the fridge in the summer. So that's really quite important. You can also freeze it as well. So the big bags are really good value. So knead your paste nice and well until it's like chewing gum consistency. So I've literally just got this out of the packet so you can see how quickly it gets nice and tacky and stretchy. Then you're going to roll it into a rough 13 centimetre sausage. But the way I'm going to show you today is kind of a messy way um, because I don't want these twigs too perfect. We're also going to use a little bit of foil as well. So I'm just going to use the stickiness of this skewer and I'm going to push down all the way through and as you can see I'm not even considering how neat this is so I'm just going to push it until I know how long it is so each of these blocks is five centimeters so there to there so we want it to go roughly from there to there so what I'm going to do is just pull it along hold it over the edges if you can because that'll give it a really strong shape and if you want to put a split in it which I do it'll make it look quite interesting. Only roll in one direction because that'll help bind it to that skewer and you can also push it at the bottom as well. Now there's lots of ways to make sticks, I appreciate that. So I just wanted um, a way to use them to support the shelter to make it a bit more interesting. So I cut a bit off the sides and I cut an angle in there. I'm going to pull this around and the next thing I'm going to grab is a piece of foil. There we go. So what you want to do is scrunch. There we go. Really nice and good. Now you don't want it too lumpy but you also don't want it too smooth. So give it a good working just to get some good texture going on there. And then what I'm literally going to do, I'm watching out for this little branch, but I'm going to put it inside the foil and give it a bit of a squeeze. Because this way, the foil will give it a really natural looking texture that would take you ages to do by hand, wouldn't it? So give it this a pinch. I might pinch that little bit of a branch a tiny bit so I can just press it down with that. Now I know the camera doesn't like foil so I just move it away for you and I just checked my measurements it's still 13 centimeters so there's lots of things you can put in twigs so one of the things that's always nice is how to do a sort of uh, a little knot in the wood that the animals might hide in so you push up with a small ball and then push down now you can also enhance that with your Dresden as well so you can come around, push in around the edge of the knot. And I find it just looks nice if you just get a little bit of different angles going in there. Don't have it perfectly straight either, because it looks a bit more fun that way. So we've got this bit on the end, but it does need to be hollowed up a bit. 
in there. This bit we don't have to worry about so much. Now you can do those pieces lower down as well. As you can see there on this one, I've put it halfway down. You don't want them all the same. And I've done this one with quite a large piece. So just to give it a bit of interest. The other thing you can do is you can really pinch some good pieces into there using the tweezers just to get some damage or some shaping going on. And this is why I like the angled tweezers because they just give it a bit of interest. The other thing you can think of is certain trees with the twigs, they actually leave little sort of nodules, little bits and pieces. When the branches break off or the leaves break off, they leave behind this little shape. So I'm just pinching with these with the tweezers. It just makes it look a bit more interesting doesn't it so it just means when we airbrush these or you could choose to paint them but i thought we'd airbrush these ones then you can really get some color into there we're going to give you what we call a washing coat first so we can do like we've done previously and airbrush it and wipe it back off again which always looks great i think now with the bottom i'm actually not worried about the bottom at all because we're going to use some sugar paste to bury these into because you could choose to put this skewer into the cake because it's perfectly safe to do they are designed for food after all but if you don't want to what I'm going to show you is how to just put a sausage or sugar paste on there we can actually use some chocolate modeling paste because it's really tasty um, and it just gives you something to bury it in and with the chocolate modeling paste it's going to go hard isn't it so we need to get some color on these so I'm just going to get myself organized and we'll start coloring so I've just prepared my board and then it suddenly occurred to me that I might as well show you how I've done it as well. So this was a little tip I learned when I went somewhere to teach. And what they do is you wet your board first. I know I've already done it, but let's cheat. Oops. And see if we can pull it back and show you again. So the idea is you wet the work surface, then you lay cling film down. And as you're laying the cling film down, you wipe it down. It's got to be a wet cloth. All right. But if you've got that really nice table and you want to protect, look at that. I've got most of my mat is covered now. So when I get to do my airbrush and when I'm finished, all I do is hold, fold that cling film up and go away. Another thing you can do is a big cardboard box and you just keep that cardboard box for airbrushing. Mine's over in the corner, but it covers your filming view, doesn't it? So I thought this would be a nice way to show you how to clean your surface. Okay, so why did I go to the trouble of covering my table if I was going to cover it again? Well, the answer is obviously the cling film's a bit shiny, so I didn't want it to reflect on you when you're trying to watch. So I also may be popping my airbrush uh, compressor down onto the table so it doesn't buzz for you too loudly, but we'll see how it goes. It's quite loud. So this is a badger. It's, it's a workhorse. It's about 18 years old. Now, there are lots of different types of airbrushes. Uh, I am notorious for blocking airbrushes and I've been rescued many times <laughs> by other people so I never class myself as an airbrush artist but when I use my badger I have to unscrew at the end and that controls how much air comes through there's no pull back it's a single action I just press the button and then the air comes out but the air doesn't come out until I press the button so for me who's a messy person I, I find I don't make as much mess that way look you can see the air coming out by whistling it on my glove um, and how open I turn this depends on how much color I haven't got the luxury of pulling back so what you tend to do is you start off closed you put your color in and then you open it up now we're going to keep these twigs really simple today okay so i've only got some black and some brown i got some fractal colors with me i've also got my airbrush cleaner so you've got to have airbrush cleaner and you can also use water to rinse it out as well which i tend to do but this uh lovely thing is where i put all my excess color into now obviously try and be a little bit careful with the amount of color you use but any excess you can squeeze the trigger and it goes into the jar and there's a filter here so it's a nice safe way of using it so the first thing I'm going to do she says watch now as I miss <laughs> I always miss I've never been able to do any droplets without making any sort of mess it's just what happens now, at the moment, the reason I've got the, the grease proof as well, as you can see, nothing is coming out until I turn. And now you can see that the colour's coming out. And, 
as any good airbrush artist will tell you the closer you go in it gets a detail and when you come further away you just get a mist so I've really barely got it open at the moment because I just want to keep it nice and simple oh good spurt there yep right so what we're doing we're doing the wash off method so making a mess first of all like that because when you want to get in there if you get in there with some dark color first it just seems to look a bit better so i've airbrushed the black onto these now and what i want is i want about one part black to five parts brown and this will just give me a really nice dark brown uh, you can also use some green in there as well that makes a really really nice color give it a bit of a swirl and let the colors mix in but can you see it's not quite black and it's not quite brown which is absolutely perfect for these branches because don't forget we need these to match up with the wafer paper ones so the florist tape stems we need to match that color can you see that's a little bit light for me i add another pinch more brown in there and uh, more black in there hang on let's add another black drop give it a swirl there we go And what you can do, you can literally go for too much colour. Can you see I'm really ploughing that colour on? And then get a piece of kitchen paper and just dab it off. It doesn't even have to be wet. You can just use the kitchen paper dry because the airbrush colour is still wet. And not only does it take the excess colour off, but it gives you texture as well. And you can completely wipe it off if you don't like what you did. But that means you've got another option to go over that and use the light patches and the dark patches. Go from different directions to catch different details that you made as well. And try and avoid handling them too much while they're wet, unless you want to use the texture of your gloves, which I sometimes do, look, to add detail. So the texture of your gloves will take off little bits, but don't forget that it's now on your gloves as well. So there we go. So join me after the break and I shall show you how I've done. Welcome back. So that's a whole heap of twigs being done. Um, now, I don't need to worry too much whether the tops are coloured at all because they're going to be covered by the shelter itself. One thing I do want to do is just have a look at them every now and again. Let's pull it under the close up and just see if it looks interesting enough. And as I mentioned, if it looks a little bit, a little bit flat in places, get some water and literally just swipe off a little bit of colour here and there. Not everywhere, but it'll just mean that when we go back and add it later on, because always in finishing touches, you can do extra bits. But can you see it just lifts off here and there? Now, it doesn't need to be a soaking wet cloth, as you can see. But the more you wipe it, the more comes off. There we are. And you can also make sure if some look a little bit too black and others look a little bit too brown, then you can sort of blend your colours back in. I think that bit there would have a nice pale bit going down the side and can you see how that really accents that depth now so anyway with this some good amount of texture but if you've got some really boring ones oh and if you catch it don't be afraid to get back in there and just sort it back out again see little tiniest bit now as you see I'm not worried about the ends too much I started doing the ends and then remembered I've actually got to cover them all if you've got a really boring one, I know I saw one with no texture whatsoever. 
I would keep those quite dark because that way then it doesn't matter if there's no texture. This one's got quite a good amount of details in it, but not much texture. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna swipe around areas of texture and reveal the texture. So the dark bits will stay in the dark bits and the light bits will come off. See, so the light bits just stand up that little bit better, don't they? Just makes it a bit more interesting. So we need some cereal. Um, now, in the UK, we've got various brands. Uh, you can have mini versions or big versions. But what I want to do is break them up to try and get as many long pieces as possible. So the ends, what I've discovered is the ends are where the seals are. So I try and get those off as much as I can. You don't have to use the ends. But if you're running short, you can. And the reason being, sometimes you get nice little bits like that and the rest of it then can be just pulled apart. It's a lot easier to pull apart when the ends are off. Messy, 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 but look at that. It's great texture, isn't it? I'm not gonna have too many long pieces. This is a small shelter. And actually I want them to look um, a bit mossy. So I'm gonna get these short, these long pieces broken. Oh, that's another cute piece, we'll keep that. But, but just break it all up, you know? Right then, let's get some colour. And when you're doing it, you colour it. You do it at the same time. So I've grabbed a few, a couple of greens and a yellow now. So I've got the, sorry about my leakage, that's what happens when you bring things up to the school from the house. Uh, one of the lids was left open. No prizes for guessing. So I've got lemon yellow, leaf green and ivory green. And I like to do a bit of a mixture here, so. And I pull all my, cal all my bits into the, the, the middle as much as possible. The other bits loose can go in the bin. Right, so this may sound strange, but I'm going to start with a springy sort of green. So I'm going to have a little bit of lemon yellow in with my leaf green. I once got an eye full doing things like this because I hadn't cleaned my cap. Always clean your cap. <laughs> Switch it on giving it a bit of a swish. Now what you can do is you can open it up and make sure it's coming out properly into there before you start. And I'm gonna give this a good old coating because what I need to do is to keep turning it and keep coating it. And the beauty is with this cereal, it doesn't all go the same color because it's already brown to start off with. That gives it this really lovely mossy color. And some moss is a little bit yellowy and some moss is a little bit darker green. So it's perfect. Oh, look, there was that good bit. Let's make sure we give that a good coating. There we are. Let's get some more colour in. So now, this time, I'm just going straight leaf green. There we go. So that was about half a cap of colour. So it's only about one cc, it's not much. CL, cc? I never get that right. There we go. Giving a bit of a turn. You can see how much difference there is. That little drop of lemon yellow really changes the colour doesn't it and like I said you can add you can add blues into this yellow and greeny mixture as well but I want to keep it nice and spring like uh, leave some of the leaf green in and mix that in with the ivy and I'm going to go ahead and give it one drip of yellow as well that's the lemon it just gives it a nice sort of yeah nice brightness and darkness at the same time so I'm not colouring all of it like this, by the way. Just a couple of splodges here and there. But can you see it sinks into the cereal? So even if you think you've coloured it a lot, you won't have. Um, you will have brown bits, but you want some brown bits, otherwise it's going to look too dull. There we go. I think we're done. Look at that. And that dries really quickly. It's dry enough to use, but I've got to say, keep gloves on. Now, if you don't want the big pieces, which I don't, can you see I'm just grinding it down? But every now and again, it'll expose some beige colour. That's looking great, isn't it? Right, come back. So that's our shredded wheat colours. That's our twigs made. And those are coloured as well. So now we need to think how we're going to do this roof. So we've got our cake over there. Now, what I thought I would do, I've got two thicknesses of wafer paper. I've got the uh, 0.5 millimetre and the 0.27 millimetre. 
Right, so let's grab this cake. Now, if you're like me and you like to make a bit of a template for things, the easiest way to do that is to grab some of the wafer card. Blue's actually going to be green, so I can use a green pen to work out roughly how much is going to get covered. Not a great deal, okay? And then I'm going to just rip it. Let's move this out of the way. Famous last words before I knock it off the table. Now, my idea is I'm going to need a bit of foil as a support. Now, you could oil the foil as well, but to be honest, I'm not going to leave it on there until it's dry. So what I would be doing was using it initially and then taking it away. Now, a desk fan works really well. I've got a de uh, dehydrator, but I found it dried too quickly for that. So I've got some foil and what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a support. Excuse the noise. Scrunch it up. And then we're going to put it where we would like this roof to be. So I know I want the roof to be there. So rather than damage the cake, the easiest way to do it, oh, that's about right actually, let's bend that in half. Yeah, there we go. Push in the corners. And the only reason I'm scrunching it is to stop it being too even. But you would need to, you can paint it with oil, vegetable oil if you want to. There we are, that could go underneath. And then what I'm going to do, now it doesn't matter if you can see your messy food colouring pen ideas either. Because the idea is this piece of, I call it wafer card because it's double thickness. So it's really quite useful to be able to, to do what I want with it. But what I'm going to do, it looks pretty brutal. Now I've got some Fabri liquid which I could choose to use. But to be honest, because I'm going to use so much, um, I'm just going to use some water. So it's my normal spritzer bottle. Um, and I know I want it to hang over this time. So I would say you could spend ages really cutting in neatly, but there's no point. I always rip my wafer paper. Now I'm going to wet this one, but for no more reason than I want it to be able to bond like that. Then I'm going to wet this one to within an inch of its life. I've got a big uh, brush here as well, but I always find for this, a spritzer bottle is easiest because what I want it to do is to go over the back and down. Now, you could start ripping it off now or you can rip it off a little bit later, but what I find is my hands are hot and I always, I'm just going to pull this off a second so I can do it without rustling. Uh, my hands are hot and I find that they, they stick to it really, really easily. Um, and wafer paper is very sticky when it's wet. I'm going to pull off the front. We're going to use this one as a double layer, actually. Let's pull that back. Yeah, let's use this as the double layer. Because I did about three or four layers when I did this. So this is the 0.27. And it doesn't matter for this one which way around it is. Because you're going to get rid of all of that texture in there. Pulling it down. Now, how long do I want this overhang? Not very big. The last one I just ripped all of it off. I'm going to leave maybe about a centimetre. And the layers that you add can actually make that thicker. And the final layer, when we finish this off, is actually going to be some sugar paste. So that sugar paste can hang over it and give it some texture. I'm not worried if it's supporting it right now because it can be moved around. Don't let it stick to itself, otherwise <laughs> you can never get it off. Keep all those bits for now in case you want to patchwork things up. I'll show you what I mean, because if you split it, you can always, whoops, don't let it stick. You can always patchwork it back up. Stay. Now, what I want you to do, mister, is to hang. There we are. So, I'm not going to use my fingers. I'm going to use a brush to push it down and then what I found was when it was wet enough it would hang down on its own and you keep going for as many layers as you want as I said I had one of the wafer card and then I used th three, either three or four uh, layers of the other I will show you how to patchwork it though because if you've got a, a rip for example pretend that's a rip get this really wet both sides and just lay it on do not use your fingers. Um, if you're like me, 
it'll stick to you there you go and then I always gave it another squirt to let it keep hanging down now the reason for the foil it won't pick up the texture of the foil unless you really wet it and push it in and as I mentioned it's going to get stuck I haven't bothered vegetable oil in it um, I won't turn it over because it's too sticky but in true blue peter style here is my scruffy messy uh, roof now don't try and bend it at this point because you can you see my green markings underneath it will split if you try and bend it but that shrinks down to that okay so the reason I did the, the number of twigs that I did is because I worked out when that goes at the back oh, so I'm smiling because I can visualize it already when that goes at the back to have enough twigs to come around I did about 25 24 um, but you could also have a lump of sugar paste either side buried in some uh, kebab skewers to hold the shape so this um, I actually put it in front of the fan to dry I didn't want to put it in the dehumidifier because I wanted to control the shape and I'll show you the really complicated way I control the shape hang on I used some colour tubes <laughs> And I, when it had just started to dry, I had gloves on and I laid it over these. Now, what I think I would have done in hindsight was got another one and laid it on the top. But I was really worried it was going to stick. But it's actually quite a ramshackle shelter anyway. So I think that's going to look quite nice on the top. So there we go. So this uh, you could leave overnight if you leave it at room, room temperature. In Wales, that's how long it tends to take. Um, if I'm using Fabri liquid, it's quicker. But like I said, I really soaked this. I would have used half a bottle and I love my Fabri liquid. I'm keeping it for something else. So I just used water instead. Um, you can also steam it into shape as well, which is really useful. So you can get your steamer and reshape it. But as I mentioned, I'm keeping that ramshackle shape because I think that'll look really nice. Right, let's sort this table out and let's start building that shelter. Hello, my name's Rhiannon Webb of Dragons and Daffodils Cakes. Last year, I celebrated my 20th year in business by writing Cyril's Cake Adventure. So join me for the next six sessions for Woodland and Whimsical Cake Art. Okay, so do you remember we kept some of the leftover covering from the top of the, the cake that's what I'm actually going to use because it was a nice mixture of maudlin chocolate and sugar paste and if I don't need this too much it's gonna actually hold its shape really well can you see it's not it's not wiggling too much is it so what I need to work out first of all is keep looking back to where our shelter is going to be now I'm looking from the front here. I'm gonna have foliage coming around that side, foliage coming around this side. Where's Rin's chair? There we go. So Rin's chair is gonna be sitting. You Obviously we've done them 13 centimeters tall, so they will fit quite nicely, but there's absolutely no need to be sticking bits and pieces into the cake if you don't wanna break the surface, because obviously you can stick the kebab skewers in. Um, but if you break the surface of something, the shelf life is shorter, isn't it? Now, chocolate biscuit cake, I normally keep in the fridge, by the way. Uh, but if you're covered, it's a little bit safer, isn't it? Okay, let's cut this off. Oh, it smells delicious. So this was the white chocolate and sugar paste mix from before. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this down on the cake. Just a little bit. And I'm just going to roughly work out where that shelter is sitting. And the thing is, I can keep moving it. But I want enough space either side. Let's wiggle over a little bit. Enough space either side for the foliage to come in. Because they're going to go in posy picks in the cake. That's the whole point with those. Um, so that's going to sit into the there. Comes forward a little bit. 
So look for the shape of the shelter now. And you can follow the shape. But I figured rather than just randomly skewering your cake and not knowing where it's going to go, I thought that was a nicer way of doing it really. So I'm going to leave it quite solid for now. Pinch it up a little bit higher because it's going to drop down slightly, which is fine. Now these lights are very, very hot in here, so it's going to get a little bit floppy than it would. You can use pure modelling chocolate. Remember this was sugar paste mixed in as well. I'm going to need my super strong scissors. I'm going to need these twigs. Now we've only just painted them, don't forget. There we go. But I don't know if you can catch the different colours on the closer camera. They have actually started to dry quite a lot. That's the beauty of airbrush colours. And they're not all the same. So we've got some which are a nice dark colour. Some have gone slightly lighter. Some have got more texture than others. Because you don't want them all looking the same, do you? But once they're in the hut, you can add your bit of dust in. So you're obviously going to put pick your favourites to go at the front. Where's the favourite? That's the good. I don't know. I like them all actually. There's all a bit of interest with all of them. That one's a nice one. Now it's only going to go into this bit. So I'm going to double check this shelter. But the beauty is because it's going in the uh, what's it called? It's going into the chocolate modelling paste rather than to the cake itself. Yeah, back a bit. I wanted a bit more room in the front. But because it's going into that chocolate modelling paste rather than into the cake, it just means I'm done after spear. However, you could spear a little bit if you wanted to. So I'm looking at the height of the chocolate modelling paste and I'm just leaving a tiny bit extra. My fingers are going to get a bit dirty today because obviously this is all still slightly soft. Oops, hang on. Still need to go further in. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'd only made these today. Right, there we go. And what's going to happen is when we put the grass in, that's going to actually cover both the sides because there's going to be grass around the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up all of this area and you can watch and fast forward. <laughs> trying to work out your sizes are roughly a centimeter in diameter so I wanted air space behind them because I thought that would look really exciting um, and you could decide whether oh look at that that's amazing and you could decide whether you wanted that um, space filled like a mud hut I quite like the idea that it was just a shelter <laughs> That's what's actually holding our shelter together. But can you see? Oh, can you imagine that? I'm imagining a certain chocolate bar that we can get in the UK. Normally associated with Christmas and parties. 
And now I'm thinking how tasty would it be with those in. I could have saved you all the bother, but nah, twigs are great. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to neatly trim off the outside of this because I don't want it quite as prominent on the outside. Inside, that's fine. And I'm leaving it quite loose. There we go. But I'm going to leave this outside shorter and I'm going to grab my Dresden and pop some texture on it because we can paint this up later as well. Okay, if you don't cut through the surface of your cake at this point. Smells divine. <laughs> this, this is the Life in Sugar white chocolate um, modelling paste and it's mixed in with sugar paste. But if you think about it, all I can smell is chocolate on the sides, chocolate on the top. It's a disaster. Right, there we go. I'm making sure that I haven't moved those too much. My disaster one. There's always one, isn't it? And I didn't like it. Okay, those bits I'm going to reuse in a second. I'll show you why now. I'm just going to add texture on this. Because if I add lots of texture then I can colour it later on. Now you could have done this in green to start off with, but I know we're gonna have those paints out. So I don't think there's any need to do that. Now I think some white chocolate modelling paste onto the top of these is a great plan. So I'm gonna get a sausage of paste, I'll just move that out of the way. A sausage of this leftover, so this is sugar paste and chocolate modelling paste combined. I'm just looking to see how roughly how long I need it. And I'm going to fit that on top of the twigs, but I'm not pressing them onto them at the moment. Now this is not sticky sticky, but it will stick, so you don't have to worry too much. And if this doesn't work, I might try some chocolate. I was going to do some chocolate, but then I thought, you know what? This might cushion out the inside of it and pull these end ones together. Yeah, it does. There you go. Good plan then. Let's stick that down. And a bit more over this side. I want this a bit thicker here because this can be painted. So I'm not worried about this overlap. Pull these together. It is so warm in here. You can probably tell by my bright pink cheeks, but that's because of all the studio lights we've got on. So once you're satisfied that it's roughly in the right place, that is when you pull this shelter piece over the top. Because what you don't want to do is to crack it. Oh yes, that's better. And then you can gently ease it into place. It doesn't have to be pressed everywhere. And if it's not needed somewhere, the modeling chocolate, I mean, then you can take it off. I'm just gonna push it into place, tucking it inside our shelter. And then I'll just press up against the top. It's just, look, so much more secure now. Look, it's really strong, isn't it? It's nifty stuff. So add a bit of texture if you can see it. Do you know what I mean? Don't keep it smooth. Blend it down a little bit onto the twig. Right, so I'm just going to carry on blending. And then in the final part, oops, and then in the final part, we'll add that grass and the roof. <music> Hi, my name's Paul Bradford, and today I'm going to be taking you through all the different stages to create these fabulous cupcakes, cookies, and cake pops. So first up is the cupcakes. So we're going to show you how to bake these lovely, beautiful vanilla sponge cupcakes, and then we finish them in two different styles. We've got the buttercream style, and I'm going to show you how to do the buttercream from scratch, how to add colour, and of course pipe it on top of the cupcake. And then we're going to move on to the sugar paste or fondant, same thing, and we're going to get these beautiful little faces and little decorations on top of the cupcakes. Then we're going to move on to the cookies. So we're going to show you how to bake them from scratch, then how to decorate them with run out royal icing and then so many little fun ways to decorate them. I 
And then the last thing are these beautiful cake pops. They're so fun. And you can see here we've got the more children style fun ones. And then over here we've got the posh ones for the posh people who want to have some champagne and a wee cheeky bit of cake. So come on, let's get started. Welcome back. So I think that's looking great now. I What I've done is I've gone around and I've actually textured all of it in the end um, because I figured we might as well get texture underneath it just in case something ends up getting painted rather than covered. Now I've used the same stuff as we've used before, the white modelling chocolate uh, by Life in Sugar mixed in with some sugar paste and I've got 60 grams of the modelling chocolate and 130 grams of the sugar paste. So slightly more cho modelling chocolate in this one. And I've rolled out a really scruffy shape. Now the point of this is, it just needs to be slightly longer and slightly wider than our shelter. I've also coloured it with the grass green with fractal colours. And I've left it streaky because if it's streaky, it doesn't look too plastic. Um, now what this is gonna do, this is gonna cover the top of the shelter, but it's gonna give me something to paint with piping gel uh, that is going to make it so much easier for the, the cereal to stick to. So I'm using a nail brush and I'm pressing down and just giving some texture. Can you hear the amount of pressure I'm giving it? And on the edges, you can rip it. See? Drag it, rip it, let those bits stick in there. Because if you do that, it's just going to look a bit more interesting when it hangs over the edge which is what we're going to let it do so it doesn't matter if we can't get the cereal to stick everywhere as long as we've got some texture there we go now we could actually let the cereal go when everything's dry as well that's another option but i'm just going to go ahead right okay now what i would ordinarily do is let this go completely cold first um, because it's modelling chocolate mixed with a sugar paste and as I always mention I've got quite hot hands but let's go gingerly and see how we go oh not too bad okay so but what you could do is use a little bit of piping gel uh, whatever your brand or you can make your own plenty of recipes out there on the internet uh, and if you do you're only going to put a spare in amount should we talk spare in so you're not making it swimming wet, you're just making it sparing. And that is more important on the edges, really. Right, I'm just going to hang it over the front because, quite frankly, I can patch the back if I need to. Yeah, let's pull this off. Let's make it shorter there. Yep. And a little bit, let's put it over so you can see. A little bit shorter there as well but where I can I'm leaving some bits hanging because it looks kind of cool and I'm going to add some bits onto the back just these bits I've ripped off I'm literally fixing them back on okay that's looking good so bizarrely enough now we need to get that airbrush back out because we want to add a little bit colour on the underside of it it looks really boring doesn't it and I was I'm in an R in do I go dark or do I go light and I think I'm still gonna go green because I think it's showing through the mossy roof so I've got a uh, leaf green ivy green and brown don't tempt fate put something down inside your hut there we go now normally I would use cling film, but as you saw earlier, I just ran out. <laughs> so I'm actually going to go in with the dark colour first. So in with the ivy green, Oy, where's my gloves? So I have no cap on this one, so we don't want any mess. There we go. So just airbrushing the roof. Watch you don't touch your cake, mind. There we go. Tucking it underneath. So now we need to do the other messy job and that is we need to get the lovely cereal that we did onto the top. Now I do need to put a decent amount on this sugar paste. 
there we go and I've also let it go a little bit cold so it's holding its shape quite nicely but I'm not actually wetting the shelter roof I'm wetting the sugar paste which is why I've put the sugar paste on because um, I really wanted something really good and sticky to stick all this messy cereal stuff that's going to be covering everything in a minute Okay, just overlap some pieces to get them grabbed. Right, there we go. Okay, messy time. Right, so we've got all our moss. Do you remember that bit that I showed you earlier that was hanging? That's going to be used over the front, just like that one. So I'm going to break up the rest even more than before. Right, so ah, here we go. Messy stuff at the ready. And the lovely brownness of it just looks so cool. But you need lots of sticky. That's why you can hear the noise. Right, so I'm going to keep putting this on so you can watch while I do. this was if you're having problems with overhangs you could leave that hanging but it looks too good to need it so I'm not going to do that so what you can do now is ever so carefully lift up this pieces and put the loose bits back in your pot you will have some coming off but that's okay because we're going to sprinkle some later anyway and all this that's on your work surface as long as your work surface was clean to start you can use that as well Right, okay, let's get all these bits up. So I'm just going to clean up and I shall be back. Okay, so I have just rolled out, you remember our modelling chocolate and sugar paste mix we had that we covered with the green before? So I've rolled out a bit more of that. I'm just getting some more corn flour on my knife. Like I said, it's just rather warm in here, that's all. And modelling chocolate is stickier, but that's why I've put it with sugar paste, but the day is just too hot for it to not affect it. So what I'm going to do is loosely and roughly now that is the point of the game with this now I'll turn it around in just two seconds but I'm just going to drive my Dresden and pick up these scruffy bits because I'm going to show you what becomes of them now and if there's too much like I'm about to do I'm just about to rip some off as well so because what we want these bits to do is just to look like they're growing up the side of the shelter. So if I turn it to the front for a second, you can see that it's overlapped there. I'm just gonna lift this up onto the sides like that and then drag my veining tool up there, literally ripping this paste apart, okay? Let it fall down there. And why am I using modeling chocolate, you might be wondering. Because it's harder to use modeling chocolate for this sort of texture than it is sugar paste, even if you've mixed it in on a hot day, but it tastes so delicious. So if you're putting this on a cake surface, can you imagine how much nicer that is for the taste of the whole thing? So what I'm going to do, the same as the, the front as I am for the back, I'm going to add pieces of paste and all the way around the back, I'm just going to roughly add them like that and then I'm going in with the tweezers so I'm just going to pull it all up and just get some really good texture going on let it stick to the tweezers because it'll pull even more you just got to make sure it doesn't rip off the cake you can look on my uh, 
country cottage, or should I call it Paul's retirement cottage, because that's what he said, <laughs> he's going to retire there. There's lots of texture in there using these sort of methods. Right, so I'm going to go and do that all the way around, and then we will come back, we we'll shall finish it off. Okay, so I've got my colours done. I'm just going to test what I've got. It's a bit dark at the moment, I'm waiting for those light colours to come through, so you can see them now. So I'm going to go in with those light colours and I'm aiming slightly higher because it doesn't matter if the twigs get a little bit browned but I don't want too much overspray onto the base so I'm lifting it up higher rather than lower I'm careful at the front do you know what I mean so you can swipe up as well rather than just go in for it I want to catch the detail on this grass and if I don't go against the grain, you won't see any of that. So I'm just going to catch this detail that way, just by going in different directions. And I'm going up and away from the edge to try and preserve my slice, my slice of nature. Carly's nearly finished. <laughs> lighter at the front they're also going to catch bits around the very edge of the tree as well you see ever so lightly all the way around just to give it that something so there we go all the color is on I think that looks so much better, doesn't it? Especially with that bit of brown around the edge as well. It really sort of emphasises the green. This obviously needs to dry and it will change colour slightly when it does. But don't forget you can go over it with dust colours as well. Keep hold of your cereal bits and pieces as well. Pop them in a Tupperware container because we're going to use those in week six when we finish everything up. But join me next time when we'll be f making Vryn snoozing away in his chair. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, don't forget to pop them either below or you can visit me on the website on the link below. But otherwise, I will see you soon and happy caking.